Are you ready to go boldly where no one else has gone before? Well, join me today as we print the Galaxy Class Enterprise D from Star Trek TNG and Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Generations. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, we are printing the Galaxy Class Enterprise D. Now, this is the standard Enterprise D. This is not the Deep Space Nine extra phasers or the all good things third warp nacelle dreadnought Enterprise D. This is the Galaxy Class standard that we saw for a long time, seven seasons in TNG, and we saw it make appearances in Deep Space Nine. Even Star Trek Voyager at the last episode it made an appearance. And also just, it's one of those ships, Star Trek, the next generation is the one I started on. It was the one going on when I was a kid and it just caught my fascination. It just grew to where I just like all Star Treks. Even the new movies. Even though, you know, they're a different timeline. We'll talk about them. Some other time we'll talk about the Kelvin timeline. If you want to see a, sh a print of a Kelvin timeline ship, comments down below, let me know. But today we are going to print a single print Galaxy Class Starship. Now, this one had a problem when I printed it. I accidentally didn't check retraction. So I've got some stringing on this one. So we're also going to touch on that in this video, on how to get rid of one way to cut down the stringing issue after a print is done. Because, yeah, stringing sucks. Let's be honest. It happens to all of us. Retraction is one of the easiest ways to fix it. Also, just looking at your speeds, make sure you're not going too fast and you're, you're not extruding too much material. Retraction is usually nine times out of ten the problem I found with mine. And every time I update Cura or something, it seems like that gets unchecked. <sighs> it happens, but we will solve that problem today. As we get a good look at this Galaxy class, you can see there. there's another one behind me that's even bigger, but I had to print it in pieces. But that's for another time. Today we're doing a single print. This guy was done on a CR-10 V2, and honestly, it came out gorgeous. Even with the string, it came out with wonderful detail, except for the on the saucer section. There's no windows, but there's a way to fix that too with a, with a good tip soldering iron that you're willing to waste the tip, heat it up, and you can actually go around and make those indentions uh, very gently and very low heat that you can make that groove and go through. And then of course, you know, as you paint it, you do the Aztec pattern and different things like that. And of course, there's some sanding across the back where my supports were stuck, but we'll fix that all. So we'll hop into Kira, we'll get this guy sliced because I moved it around all kinds of ways to get the least connection points and all of that. I wound up going with the usual method of printing straight up and down. And you can see too that there is some stringing on the side. Again, that retraction wasn't there, so when my octolapse and my print head moved, it created a stringing along the sides. But I'm going to show you kind of a neat way to cut some of that down here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hop over to Kira, we're going to slice it, we're going to print it. Then we're going to kind of fix it. Um, I don't have the support removal video from this. Honestly, there's not a lot of support. It came off really easy. And then we're going to get out the one tool that I use to kind of help with some of the stringing issues. So let's hop over to Kira. But before we do, one thing we got to kick in gear here. This channel is made possible by you guys. Every subscriber is important. So if you like what you see in this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join this crew as we continue with all kinds of science fiction prints and just how to upgrade your printers and do cool things with them. So if you got questions about 3D printing, leave a comment down below. That way I, I can get back to you, help you out, and we keep building this. Because why do I do this? Is to help you guys out. Um, I'm doing all kinds of cool prints. I could keep this to myself. I could make this a business. But honestly, the whole goal of this channel is to help you who's doing printing and answer questions and make your printing better. So that's the whole goal of this. So questions, comments down below. Let's hop over to that computer and get started with Kira. All right, so let's hop in here and let's talk about the models that we're doing today. Those models come from this kit, which Solid Alexi made. And honestly, this is a solid model set. If you're looking for anything Star Trek ship-wise, Solid Alexi did a really good job on these models, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to pull this over. And I'm going to show you, these are the actual files within the folder. And so there is a solid and then there is in pieces. So you can print this in multiple pieces and actually do the print. So you're not stuck with any of it. And just the actual collection is 
fantastic. There's a lot of great models in here, but today we are after the Enterprise D. There's the link up there. It'll be down in the description below as well. So let's get over to the Enterprise D. Now in this model kit, I am doing just the Enterprise D, not the FDM. I'm not doing the separated one. So we'll pull that in and it's gonna show us that beautiful ship. Easily done on an Ender 3. I don't care about mesh tools. It doesn't need to be watertight. This ain't thing isn't going to the ocean. So beautiful looking model. Now we just need her to print, right? So let's get her set up. So I played with angles and supports for quite a while and I came to the conclusion this was the easiest way to get it to print was to stand her up straight. And of course on this channel, how do we do it? We make her bigger. I think 200% might be too big, but we're putting the CR-10 to the test. There we go. There's the model. Now, layer height, all that fun stuff. Here's all of my settings. I'm doing this as a model. I'll give it 5% infill. Just give her some internal support. Uh, yeah, so basically I'm using Inland Pro PLA plus white to print this one. I usually run it about 215 degrees. As I said, this is a CR-10 V2 doing this print job for us. So 215, 210 works pretty well. I'm in the middle of winter when I printed this one. So I actually dropped my build plate temperature down to 50 degrees. Um, as summer comes in, which it's starting to here, I'm actually gonna jump that back up because there's an air conditioning vent in the room. Um, so I'll jump that plate up to keep from warping and stuff like that. But for me, 50 degrees C works really well with the inland doing a raft. And I did a raft with this one. Now make sure you got that checked, that enable retraction. That's where I messed up on this one, is I did not have mine enabled. And that caused this, when I don't have it enabled, I get stringing like crazy, which is what happened in this print. And you'll see it as the print builds. Generate support. I'm gonna go with a 70% support. Let's get this guy slicing. I did a raft. And the reason why I do a raft, a lot of times you guys will see me do a raft. I'm like, why are you doing that? It's a waste of material. I'm doing something very narrow vertically. I want to have as much purchase as I can on that build plate. So let's get this layers process and see how the support comes out. As you guys can see, not a whole bunch of support going on here. Now I didn't up my raft for something like this. I'll probably do a 15 millimeter raft just to give it enough. That way if my print head for some reason drags on it or something, I don't lose the model. It'll, the raft is holding that guy in place, hopefully. So I'm rerunning this real quick. We're gonna hop over and get to the print and get to that showing you how to get rid of some of that stringing. But you can see I did the raft there and not a lot of support is needed the way this builds up. There's some support for the impulse engines where it goes across straight. Um, some support just onto the backer part of the saucer and then just the base down here needed some supporting. Um, so not a lot of waste of support. Now, again, you guys, some people have commented that it's a huge waste of support doing the raft. I highly disagree. And honestly, I could print five of these in a spool. So no, uh, I would rather waste the 40 grams to build that raft and get my print, then lose this print at 70% and lose 150 grams. So you, there's a give and take math here, but the way that I've done this one, uh, the way I printed it going vertically like this, it printed real, it, you guys can see the finish result here in a few minutes, a uh, few moments actually probably, that it prints cleanly. I get really good detail, especially for an FDM print of this size, and it comes out really nicely. So. That's all there is to this guy. Uh, Solid Alexi made an awesome model kit. Now I'm gonna pop it in real quick. I'm gonna clear the bill plate and I'm gonna pop in the FDM because I want you guys to see this too. I did not print this, but there you go. No real supporting needed. It's cut into pieces, ready for you to glue and put together and have your model kit that way too. So, and especially if you have a smaller printer like an Ender 3 or something this is a great way to get a good size model without the surface area of the Ender of the CR10. So keep that in mind. This model kit is just awesome. 
Um, I mean, it's got the Enterprise F, the, the J that we only saw in one episode of Enterprise, the Space Shuttle, which is just awesome. And it even has the Kelvin timeline and the NX-01 refits um, that we never saw, but you see on some of the books for the Romulan War. So a lot of cool ships in here. Kelvin, non-Kelvin, uh, just some really cool stuff in here. So I'd definitely go check this model maker out on Thingiverse, guys. Uh, this Just putting this whole kit together is just awesome. So let's hop over to that time lapse and I will see you guys on the other side to show you how I got rid of stringing. All right, guys, that's the print. Pretty straightforward. You've got the Galaxy class. It looks fantastic, but we got strings. And they suck. And they're hard to get off. And who wants to sit there and scrape this thing with a razor blade? So one thing you can do, if it's really just kind of thin spider webbing, get your heat gun. Or a hot, a hair dryer will even work as long as it will get pretty hot. Some hair dryers, they get hot. I, I use a heat gun. So on what you can do, and sorry for the noise, uh, that mine has two settings, high and low. Um, I'm gonna go for high. Now be very careful when you're doing this. One, don't burn your hand that's holding the model. Two, don't hold it in a spot too long because this will melt. You just want to get it hot enough that the stringing vanishes. So, to the noise, let's get rid of some stringing. And that's all there is to it. No more stringing. It's way cut down. It's pulled back in. And now it's just time to sand. Like I said, I may go through with the hot iron, with the uh, a cheap soldering iron and start doing the indentions for the windows. Also, I could just leave it and come back with a permanent marker and make the little dots for all the windows. And using, here's my trick for white windows, uh, a whiteout pen. It works great. Simple tool, does the job. But there you go. Galaxy class starship ready to go on the wall after some sanding and a little bit of paint. If you guys want to see me paint this, let me down know down below and we will uh, definitely work on a paint job for this one because at some point I had a Star Trek kit that had that has all the decals for this. I don't know where the model went. And who knows? That was 10, 20 years ago. But I found the decal sheet. So nameplate, stuff like that. <laughs> definitely going to go on this model. So thank you guys. Remember, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And if you want more 3D printing tips, like a video that I'm planning on coming up is where that support was and it's rigid, there's a way to clean that up without just sitting there with a sander. So thank you guys. Stay tuned. Hit that sub button. We see you next time.